scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Our world today is full of many men, women, young people without a sense of vision without a sense of direction and without a sense of destiny it used to be very old and elderly people who would have diseases like high blood pressure and would even think of committing suicide but right now the rate of suicide among young people and the rate of diseases like high blood pressure is on the increase and it only goes to show that something is wrong the average young man seems to be discouraged about life discouraged about God discouraged about destiny and um, I think it is very very important that at platforms like this that we have an opportunity to hear God speak to us and speak to our destinies and so tonight I want to share very briefly on the topic I titled the price for uncommon impact please write it down the price for uncommon impact what is responsible for the mighty impact that a handful of people make in their generation what is responsible for certain names today that have become keys you mention that name a door can open for you what is responsible for the names that have etched themselves in the archives of history when we read through scripture, we find names. Everyone, please say names. Would you shout it one more time? Say names. Yes, thank you. There are names that never made it in the Bible, but were there when Jesus walked the earth. There are names that never made it in our history books, but they were alive when history was being made. There are names that we do not know yet they existed so what is the secret and what is the price if you pay attention to that which I teach you tonight it's impossible for your generation to ignore you are we together now the challenge many times is that we claim influence we claim impact we claim a life of purpose and a life of destiny but we do not understand the methodologies the prescribed pathway that can take a man from a life of mediocrity and failure and pain to a life where you become the face of God to a generation what I am teaching you is very powerful please hear me every generation needs a face that represents the face of God to them every generation needs a voice 
that represents the voice of God to them. Every generation needs men that represent pillars that guide the values of that society. And when a generation loses men and women that represent God, that generation is in trouble. Respectfully so, in the generation of our parents, we have great people like the founders and the leaders of this great assembly four square i had the privilege permit me to just use that example to pass through the redemption camp before coming and i had the honor of being guided to a tour around the geo's house and i had the privilege to pray on his bed pray in his prayer room before coming right here and I began to talk to myself and I said, that was not the only man born in his days. So what happened to the rest? It's a terrible thing to watch television and watch your future, but you are not there. You watch other people, you aspired like them. We will get there. Oh, it's a bright future. And never have the opportunity to go there. You know, years ago i used to have a lot of colleagues and friends wonderful people who aspired for a great destiny some of them today are in prisons truthfully speaking some of them are alive but not living some of them are scattered around wallowing in mediocrity and so i came tonight with a passion to truly show you a pathway by the spirit of god within a few minutes and then to also pray that God will grant knowledge and then grant you the grace that can shift you from where you are to the place of destiny. Listen to me. There are many of you under the sound of my voice. You are the prayer of your mother. You are the prayer of your father. Prophecy brought you, not desire. There was a man sent from God sent from God are we together the Bible says his name was John and that the same came for a witness to bear the witness to the truth that through him all men might be saved one day my mother told me a little story on how I arrived here I've said it here that my grandfather was the founding father of one of the great denominations in the north and so I come from a lineage of missionaries. And then when that man got old and he was about to die, my mother prayed a prayer. I'm saying this to inspire you. And she said, Lord, is this how this grace will die from this family line? And she said, I donate my womb. Either use my child or use any of my brother, but let this grace continue. And she thought God did not answer until I came. Many of your loved ones thought God did not answer the prayer that they prayed. But you are that answer seated now. The answer to the pain, the answer to the fasting. When they fasted and prayed, God sent you as an answer. And please pay attention to what I share with you now. Because it will bless you. I made up my mind years ago that I will become the face of God to my generation. It was not something that just happened. It was not something that was a product of luck. It was not something that was a product of um, circumstance. It was with intention. That was why when I saw this, it touched me. Circumspectly with intention everybody by God from God and through God has a destiny please say I have a destiny I'm being very simple tonight for a reason my intention is for us to get something that can inspire us all through this conference say one more time i have a destiny <laughs> jeremiah chapter 29 and the 11 verse i'll quote it for time it says i know the thoughts that i think towards you saith the lord 
thoughts of peace or good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end say expected end that means that in the mind of god before you came through the womb of time there was an expected end please understand this number two in the dealings of god with men he never sends a man without a destiny there is no man sent by god there is no man under the sound of my voice who does not have a destiny an allocation a role to play in god's universal agenda your destiny is a representation of not only your assignment but the role you have to play in god's universal agenda the role the agenda of god is fragmented into assignments and roles and we have been assigned jesus said in hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 apostle paul was making a quotation that i believe was in reference to the messiah the christ he says lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me when you read luke chapter 4 one time jesus comes and stands in the temple and the bible says it was given to him the scroll of esaias and then he begins to read about his destiny the spirit of the lord is upon me he said for he has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free to deliver the oppressed and then to declare the acceptable year of the lord the bible says he closed the scripture and said this day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes i have come as a fulfillment have you found yourself here have you opened the bible one day and saw something written and you know this is me not prophetically literally this is my space in destiny i found it many continue to live aimless lives governed by university then governed by nysc then governed by a job somewhere if they find or a business then governed by marriage then governed by parenting then governed by pain and misery then governed by old age then finally miserably ending in death that cannot be god's desire an intelligent creature should not live like that and an intelligent creator should not be that dull to allow a man come and walk the surface of the earth with this kind of confusion lo i come as it is written of me to do thy will one day i found the scripture for my life and my destiny tears came out of my eyes and i said this is it i have found not the reason for living but what you can die for please listen very carefully god is speaking to your heart and inspiring and challenging you otherwise there is a generation of visionless people that will arise and the bible says without vision the people cast off restraint the key to discipline is vision the key to focus is vision and when you find out that your life is going haywire part of the reason may be that you have not found something that can commit you for life now i want to just write this down success generally speaking can only be referenced on five platforms there are only five biblical platforms that means when a man says i am successful it's not generic there are only five areas or six or maximum seven i would say number one god's idea of success is first measured in the quality of your spiritual health the first index to measure true biblical success is the quality of your spiritual health 
that means in God's mind if your spiritual life goes down and you are not rich unto God like scripture will say then it does not matter what you are able to acquire in time the Bible weighs you very small everybody please shout spiritual health and I'm arranging success for you based on the order of priority God cannot be somewhere in the equation of your life the formula is in the beginning God say it after me in the beginning in the beginning of anything God in the beginning of my success God in the beginning of my academics God in the beginning of my marriage in the beginning of my parenting in the beginning of my financial journey in the beginning of my career he has to be alpha alpha the starter in the beginning of my giving God in the beginning of my spending God in the beginning of my day God that scripture is very instructive it says in the beginning God it's governed my life God is not only interested in being part of your life he's interested in being the starter the priority are we together so your spiritual health is the first index that measures true success number two very quickly the second measure of success is your degree of mental transformation the second true measure of success in that order is the degree of mental transformation the degree to which your mind has become the mind of Christ and the degree to which you have been enlightened let's shout that word say enlightened one more time say enlightened it comes from the word light it means illumination are we together please look up you rise in life only limit of light illumination and development of their minds number two the relationships that they have at that enlightened level number three the graces that operate on their life this is what separates any two people you literally can reproduce another person into another person if you provide these three platforms the requisite level of information the relationships that connect that person at that enlightened version of him and then the grace that comes upon them the difference between you and any man of God or any great leader that you admire is the information there is a body of knowledge that they have that you do not have knowledge is powerful spiritual illumination is powerful listen to me listen to me when the Holy Spirit comes into your life I hope you are learning tonight when the Holy Spirit comes into your life the assignment of the Holy Spirit listen is not just to make you a Christian or a preacher no 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 being a preacher is the geography of your assignment the Holy Spirit's assignment when you are saved when he comes into your life his assignment is not just to make you a prayer warrior his assignment is not just to make you anointed to heal the sick no his assignment is to begin to transit you until you become the portrait of the Christ are we together now transformation the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 when you read from verse 1 and 2 it says I beseech thee brethren let me quote it because of time I beseech thee brethren by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God he says holy and acceptable and he calls it your reasonable act of worship then verse 2 says do not be conformed to this age is the Greek word aeon it means the thinking pattern the mindset the belief system that is associated with a territory do not conform to it but then it says be ye transformed how by the renewing of your mind 
and then he says that transformation will help you now to be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God this is scripture Philippians chapter 2 Paul was teaching the church in Philippi and verse 5 he began to teach and he said let this mind be in you permit it the word let there means permit allow this construction Jesus was not Jesus on earth just because he was the son of God he was a man in the flesh but he grew through transformation at age 12 when his colleagues and contemporaries were loitering around the bible says jesus was in the temple is that correct he was learning he was building listen aside from your spiritual growth your next assignment is not to look for money your next assignment is not to look for fame your next assignment is to be able to grow into the version of you that your future is looking for you see, success is not what we look for. Success is what is attracted by who we are becoming. It's a mistake that many people continue to make. Maybe I will use the choir because of time. Can I have six or seven gentlemen just run quickly and come? Please. Please. Let's celebrate them as they come. Quickly, just come. And I want to do an illustration here. Thank you. Come. Just stand. Four of you stand here. Four of you stand here. All of you watch this. I want to teach you something that I don't want you to forget for the rest of your life. Oh, they are bending. Let's, let's shift here so that um, the ministers can see. Come with me, gentlemen. Stand. Four of you facing me. Four of you face me here. You understand? Okay. I thought they were. Okay. No problem. Now, watch this. No, no, no. Okay. Three. Yes. Watch this. Just space yourself. Now, I want to be successful. Watch me. Call this guy a car. Call this guy fame. Call this guy money. Are we together? Call this guy um, a good home. Call this guy an estate or whatever it is that you want. And call this guy whatever else you want. Now, this is the mistake that many people make. When you start your journey in life, watch this. These are the things that society defines as success. And there are elements of success in them. But the mistake we make is that we grow spiritually. So we spend time with God. But when it has to do with succeeding in life, we begin to chase these things one by one. That labor is a cause. Are we together? Please learn this. This is a deliverance already for someone. Everything you are looking for is also looking for you. But not this version of you. Listen. Everything you are looking for is looking for you. It continues to come to your destiny and does not find you. Because the version it is looking for is not yet there. Please understand the influence you are looking for is already looking for you but every time it comes to your future it does not see you there because this version cannot get that result and if you force yourself to get that result it's like holding a rubber ring it must go back it will go back as many things listen if you listen to what i teach you tonight and you learn it there is no power in existence that will stop you from rising to a great destiny understand what i teach you so here's what we try to do i stay at this unenlightened level but i want the result of this level so i try to force my way through it and when i get it the result rejects me because it was designed by god to honor a particular version of me so there is a version of enlightenment that attracts certain levels of results. This is a tragedy of entering a realm that you have not entered through transformation. Any realm you do not enter through transformation is not yet your own. It will leave you. It will leave you as circumstances. It will leave you as a failed business. It will leave you as someone scamming you. That's just the, the caricature, the real reason why it left you was that you were not there when you acquire anything 
that your mind has not had yet your destiny will interpret it as an error and it will make sure it leaves you when it leaves you your destiny says now you are fine that means true success is not pursued god already saved us the labor of looking for things when you labor to get things it is impossible to give god the glory now this is how success comes are, are we still together remember i'm teaching you the five platforms that express success you won't believe that this is not even my message tonight i just came with a burden but if we stop here tonight i believe you have something number one i said your spiritual growth number two i'm talking of your mental transformation are we together now watch this this is the ladder of mental growth that means as i am transformed to look like christ but not only to look like christ in terms of bible knowledge but there is a particular information that makes leaders there is a particular information that makes wealthy people there is a particular information that makes churches work there is a particular information that makes a good husband and a wife. That body of knowledge are located for specific results. As you acquire them, watch what happens, all of you. For every step I take forward, you two move forward to me. Are we together? When I go back, you go. Now watch this. While I am in my small room, I want, God tells me, son, I will take you all over the world in this example and that me may be you now are we together now the secret is not to go and look for fame say respect me i'm blessed i'm anointed no when i grow here watch this as i'm growing watch what is happening to my destiny i'm praying Shakata batata. i must get there are you seeing that i'm colliding with that reality when i backslide and i go back this is what i do to my destiny watch this it is true so when god says son don't worry don't go and lie down on any jeep trying to claim anything that's unnecessary burden just grow it is already provided for a particular version of you there is a version of you that that jeep must come to without prayer the problem is not remaining where you are I'm praying for things. The problem is goal growing. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus grew. Jesus grew. There was a version of him that the donkey you spoke about would not come to. The donkey was not coming to a baby in a manger. The donkey was coming to one filled with the Holy Spirit and was a world changer. There are some results you are praying for that the hindrance is God, not Satan. God is the one who created this loss. He will never let it come to you. That version of you cannot have it. Please hear what I teach you and deliver yourself from mediocrity forever. Every great man will tell you that everything he was looking for was looking for him. But he did not find him, not this version of him. Canaan was looking for Israel, but not disobedient Israel, not rebellious Israel. There was, there was a version of Israel. There was a name already in heaven for Jesus, but not the uncrucified Jesus. When he died and rose again, the Bible says, therefore God had so highly exalted him and as a result of that death, he gave him a name, an office. So watch this. Instead of looking for cars, instead of leaving God to look for fame, this is what I do. As I study the word, and as I educate my mind, as I allow myself to be mentored, you may laugh at me when you pass with your car, but watch what my destiny is doing. I don't have the luxury of picking what I need one by one. So I draw them in mass through transformation. This is what will happen. A day will come. I will push them and they will not go. You will steal them and they will come back. Because this version of you does not allow that you are without those things. Listen, there is a version of you that will never happen without you being a millionaire whether you like money or not it's impossible once you are transformed to that version 
the the law that god created is that that level of transformation must have the blessing that is to that degree i save you the stress and the, and the mundane pursuits that people continue to move around they do every other thing but transform their minds listen you rise up by sitting down you go out by remaining in you are known when you stay in the secret place Is God speaking to someone tonight? Please go back again. Now, please, our time is gone. Let me have one person seated in front. Come, one gentleman and one lady. <laughs> Gentlemen, there are, there are already two of you. One of you, is, it's not impartation, it's just an example. Come, and the lady, come. <laughs> I know he thinks that, um, it's an, come my dear, come. Now, two of you, come stand here. Two of you are four square students. Watch this. Now, I can be here in destiny and laugh at these ones. You will look at my result at this level and hate where you are, not knowing you can be there too. It's a road for everybody to follow. The difference between me and you is the growth that has happened. Now, it's impossible to want what I have at this level right there are, are you seeing where the mistake is now at this level you will pray for favor for one year to get one testimony at this level if I don't have favor in one week I know it's an attack are you seeing that now there is a level you get to in six hours if no favor comes it's an attack that level does not allow you to wait that far without favor God of heaven help us. please make sure you understand what I'm saying now watch this this is what the devil does he will make you to be discouraged because of how far and you will be watching the great men and women of God come close to me now if you see me this is me your mentor are you seeing my, my reality this is where I'm standing while I'm teaching you so if all you look at is my results you will be in trouble because you will see the protocol you don't know that growth is what brought me here now the real thing you should follow is not the results is follow what is transiting you to that realm so every time you come to church what what is happening take one step and come carefully watch this one sunday one student congress 2016 2017 now you are not seeing it you know when you are traveling for 95 percent of the journey you don't see where you are going and then suddenly within minutes welcome to lagos you are there you are in ibadan yet you are not in lagos and you want to abort 12 hours of laborious journey simply because your eyes has not seen one signboard whereas you are close Oh, that Joseph knew he was only 12 hours away from the throne. The last night he slept. This is it. But the devil will tell this young precious lady to forget about transformation and route another way of getting success. Hold her hand. And this lady will have somebody who is giving her money all the time and she believes she's rich let me tell you what the laws of god not a demonic attack will do a situation must be created to return this girl back to where she really belongs this is why many people for many years keep cheating malpractice of destiny and even after 30 years they return back to where they really were it's not always an attack it is that they did not follow the path well preachers businessmen hi please get what i'm teaching you this is something that god taught me anything that i don't grow into i run away from it's a waste of time if you clap for me and it did not come by growth then i know that you have only clapped for me for the last time 
why taste something and return back to pain when it can become your realm listen come the donkey spoke once and never spoke again because it was not his realm are we together handkerchiefs and aprons laid hands once and didn't do it again why should I come into a realm where I just prophesied one night and it was powerful but then there was no foundation of growth that could keep me in that realm one day I preached a powerful message by mistake and everybody said this is powerful and for the next five years I cannot preach any message that matches it again one day I just healed somebody by mistake and they say wow this is powerful one day as a gospel artist I write one song by mistake that lifts me and for the next five years I remain down because no other song could rise the problem is not an attack is growth please learn this my precious people so that you know that every time you invested in the presence of God invested in a platform of mentorship like this is kindness to your destiny are we together now you are sitting quietly now someone may be a businessman and he may feel bad leaving his business to attend a program like this because he's going to miss 500,000 how much is that compared to the needs of your destiny you are here but God wants to push you here and Jesus grew it's a scary statement even the word grew the word grew now please step back watch this now let me show you what is happening the Holy Spirit hold your hands together together I come from a background where nobody knows me God will you lift me yes my son how will it happen not by trying to fake your life it may take time but move with the dignity of honor oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever love you oh god you are my god and i will ever follow listen and i will seek you in the morning and i have learned to walk in your ways for step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days step by step you lead us ah. step by step out of pain step by step out of shame step by step out of mediocrity your mother did not go to school I know but take your mind to the school of destiny and come out of pain watch this watch this come back again my, my dear people let me tell you how God designed this system am I are you learning something this night may you never forget what I'm teaching you this night listen to me the law of destiny as designed by God is that your future is real but the first person to get to your future is your mind your mind comes to verify whether it's real when your mind gets there it will come and say body follow me is real your mind will come and take your body there anywhere your mind does not get to if your body tries to get there the authorized escort to your body is your mind the ministry you are claiming to have now has your mind gone with the holy spirit to that place 
you are ceo only on paper is your mind a ceo you are a man of god only because of the paraphernalia of ministry that is around you years ago i used to know these great guys on campus these people would never listen and follow the law of process i mean they wanted ministry to work now they wanted tv ministry they wanted cars and you know sometimes we confuse these things with faith faith is not foolishness there are many things that we call faith respectfully speaking that is only lost looking for expression it is not faith because if you know god you will know that there are things to not pray for growth they were already answered in growth A little baby is born with a womb is that true but that version of that baby cannot carry a child but the womb is there a little boy is born with capacity to have children but not that version of him the child does not grow and say body make sure you get to a point where my wife can take it no it's an unnecessary prayer God's intelligence already provided that as you keep growing you get to a point even without being aware that you had gotten to the capacity that will make that happen that's why when you get there and it does not happen you know it's an attack because you know that it should happen effortlessly if your little two-year-old daughter comes to meet you and say mommy why am i not pregnant you see that that very statement tells you her age isn't it it verifies that she's a child but when a woman who is 25 30 and has been married and there's no child then you know a miracle is required because that one is the finger of satan please listen to me don't say i graduated 20 years ago there's no job now don't feel offended with what i'm telling you i came to stretch you a bit tonight we'll pray you have a certificate that is 20 years old but how old is your mind are we together your mind is only attracting to your life what reflects its level when i found this out my life changed i stopped looking for things i grow into things the any dimension that i have to struggle to enter is proof that I'm not yet there you see one of any of our uncles here and the men of God if you go to the streets now look at this and, and I want to say it with all humility I don't mean to boast please understand this if our uncle here goes outside now and you see him buying pure water on the street just one pure water do you know what you will do the law of his growth will force you to say no sir let me buy you table water imagine seeing your general overseer trying to buy a plate of food in a restaurant his level of growth does not allow for that reality in his life again it has nothing to do with humility no the law will force someone to say that can i have the privilege you call it privilege remember before it was a it was a miracle at this level eating three times a day was a miracle but not at this level so miracles are relative what you are praying for is what someone is is saying oh god this is too much it is growth listen to me every car you have seen when you saw it it saw you too it passed because it's not your own yet the office you will later walk in saw you when you saw it but it's not looking for that version of you when you watch television and you saw certain leaders standing and you imagine you standing you were not wrong but not that version of you as a man of god god showed you where you will go in the dream but it has not come physically because your mind has not arrived there anywhere you go by the spirit with your mind your body must get there there is no tribal sentiment there is no political affiliation there is no prejudice there is no whatever it is please comfort yourself 
everything you see today don't be under pressure if at this level you are still soaking Gary it's not proof that your faith is not working it is the law of process do it with honor and dignity while your body is eating Gary let your mind be eaten with Kings while you are in one room let your mind be building the estate while your body is teaching five members let your mind be building the campground will your mind build a campground your body will not enter while you are in hundred level just wandering and say oh this course don't worry let your mind be collecting the phd for you your mind is attending a convocation ceremony of a doctor whereas you are here wondering will i pass this course for step by step you lead me and i will follow you all of my days do you know the purpose of dreams and visions the purpose of dreams and visions is not just to prove you are prophetic dreams and visions are spiritual strategies where the holy spirit takes your mind to your destiny so that you will see it and returns you back and then your body follows some of you seated here right now you've seen yourself on this stage is that true you've seen yourself ministering you got up and you casted it don't cast it it's not a lie but not this version of you the version of you now will not preach on this stage except you are acting drama but in reality it may not preach here it doesn't mean you are not called so while you stay in the secret place shakata kabakata while you are studying and fasting nobody is seeing you but you are coming closer to the pulpit a day will come the justice of god will fish you out of a thousand people it is true it's unnecessary to call the world to see you a system has been designed to make those who are ready seen to be seen this is it this is what god taught me many years ago i would stay and study my bible and see visions of the nations and i said lord i believe you i believe you my background notwithstanding the limitations notwithstanding do you know i travel today to places and sometimes when i stand there i begin to i almost fight tears because i saw those places years ago but that version of me as born again as it was could not come there please my precious people hear what i teach you and it will explain why many people are not moving forward because our minds froze and it's only our bodies that are moving the healer you saw is real grow into it the one feeding nations you saw is real grow into it hear me my dear sister the woman of god that you saw in your dream you saw the wives of many jews in this nation and you saw yourself in their midst it's not a lie it's a call of destiny but that version of you will never sit down with the great a day came i had a dream many years ago there were ministers gathered together and i was on stage eating i no, i was somewhere scattered and papa Ia deboye looked at me and spotted me he said come and when i was coming people were frowning what is this small boy coming to do baba is calling what should this boy be doing and then when i got there he was eating on the stage he said kneel down and eat i said no i can't i can't do this i mean i was well trained ah i would not try this he said i'm the one who is telling you eat imagine that i got up and went to redemption camp and i say i'm a man of god i have a track record of sick bodies being healed and all of that and uh, sir i saw you in the dream and because of that where is your dining table how stupid the spirit of god took my mind there to say if you walk with me this will be your destiny many people have seen things in their dreams and died and never got there 
because their minds remain in their yesterday even if your body goes to tomorrow is where your mind is that is really where you are if you are in tomorrow and your mind is in yesterday you are in yesterday lay hands on your head in one minute and for the next one minute pray in tongues and say in the name of jesus my understanding move forward my knowledge of god my knowledge of life my knowledge of destiny is someone praying pray that man of god that i saw in my visions is the holy spirit taking me to destiny i will get there that woman of the spirit that i saw that healing evangelist that i saw now i believe now i know that worshiper that i saw taking the songs of the spirit to the nations you may despise this version of me but there is a version of me that creation cannot ignore hallelujah praise the lord sit down thank you gentlemen god bless you do you understand what i just taught you so number one to measure success your spiritual health number two your level of transformation i am passionate about knowledge not random knowledge not every knowledge you must before you receive knowledge find out what allocation is given to it in terms of the problems it must solve in your destiny there are many spiritual information that are useless to the saints it is pride and carnality that continues to drive people into a body of knowledge that has no applicability to their lives and destiny just because an information is scarce or spiritual or true does not mean it is needed when you are a student and you are studying medicine, you may never visit the faculty of arts for anything. Correct? Now, that does not mean the body of knowledge there is wrong. It means as far as the course you are pursuing is concerned, knowledge there is unnecessary. If you go every day to take lectures, for instance, in theater arts, it's wonderful if you are an artist. But if you are a doctor, it, it does not matter. So we have random accumulating of spiritual knowledge. We just go online and any topic. We have so many things. And that vacillation of knowledge puffs us up to mean that because we have several knowledge, we are wise. But our results show we are not. We must trust God for guided knowledge. The Bible says when he, the spirit of truth, is come, Jesus speaking, he said he will guide you. Truth is something that you must get with guidance. Number three, let me hurry up. I guess I'll preach my tonight's message tomorrow. The third platform to measure success is your health and your physical well-being. It looks very simple, but please pay attention. A body has thou prepared for me, not just a spirit, a body. This body must be prepared to impact a generation a body has thou prepared the church is not called the spirit of christ the church is called the body of christ satan knew the value of bodies even when moses died he wanted his body bodies are important your body is your only legal access to operate in this realm if you do not have a body or if you lose your body it's more than just being healthy you have lost your right to function within this domain that's the reason why satan exits men prematurely by doing something to their body when you have an accident god forbid and please i'm not getting you emotional but when you have an accident there is a way that accident can deteriorate your body your spirit will no longer stay there and it will have to leave is that true there is a way that your health will break down to a point that your spirit will have to leave so the spirit does not just stay in the body generically there is a, a threshold level of health that can allow it to stay there so when you say i shall not die but leave that means you are saying god does not do, uh, i mean um your word says that i shall not die but leave and this body needs to be preserved 
When Jesus spoke about worry and stress, he knew what he was saying. It was a system of preserving your body so that you will last. Brothers and sisters, hear me. If I died this morning, I will not be here now. Are you aware that you need to be alive to make an impact? And that to be alive is not just a spiritual issue alone. Your body, it is very important. A body has thou prepared for me. You must commit yourself to being healthy the same way you are committing yourself to being spiritual. It's a commitment you must trust God to make. Say amen. Number four, the fourth platform to measure success is in the area of finances. You're excelling financially. Every time I come around the West, I marvel at the spirit of faith and the grace for territory that is upon this region. When I came in here, I've been here a few times, but it never, it never ceases to dumbfound me. You don't have these kinds of facilities to this degree in the North like that. To have one church, one ministry, own estates, own properties, let me tell you, You've heard me say that the name of God is heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. The name of Jesus is extremely heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set them free. Let all the nations come and see, but we have to lift up that name. Whoever tells you to ignore your finances in destiny is the one that has destroyed your life. Listen, being successful financially is not an issue of being rich. It's an issue of redeeming time. Money has nothing to do. It's not the issue of prosperity for the ego. The Bible commands us to redeem time. And one of the ways we redeem time is to have the resources to minimize wastage. Poverty is not about lack of money. It's about the servitude of your time. The highest thing you have in your life is time. Whatever can help you redeem time is an advantage. Listen to me. I will continue to preach this. The only reason why Israel goes to Egypt is hunger. Say hunger. Hunger is the only thing that takes Israel to Egypt. Let me show you a scripture. Never forget it. Genesis 42. Is it projected up here? I'm not sure it is. I just wanted to know if they are... Okay. If it will be projected, I want us to see it if you can really see. Genesis chapter 42. We'll read the first two verses. Otherwise, you just look at your Bible. The Bible talks about Jacob. If you can see it, read it with me. One to read. Now when Jacob saw that there was what? Everybody say corn in Egypt. There was corn. But the problem was the location. That's not the place to be in. But there's corn there. Then the Bible says, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. Verse 2 now. And he said, Behold, uh -huh, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. A prophet without corn will still die. Jacob was a prophet, but he said, Now we are hungry, we need corn. And Satan programmed the location of corn to be where? Egypt. So you may stand and know God and love God. You may be a prayer warrior until there is a need for your son's school fees. That hunger will start taking you from the secret place to Egypt. Believers must be empowered, but they must be empowered properly. When people understand that this subject of wealth 
has nothing to do with just being rich to prove to everybody that I'm poor. That's too small a reason for it. It is a strategy for time redemption. The Bible says the rich rule it over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. It took wealth to make this happen today. Jesus is being glorified in this place, not only on the wings of faith, but on the wings of resources. We are able to amplify this voice to you and to the nations today. When God blesses you, it takes away the temptation of, of the funny things that people do around the pulpit. Is it not when you are hungry that you would think of cheating someone on, on his food? Listen to me. God wants you to be wealthy. But the key is that you prosper even as your soul prospers. That's what Satan does not want. You will have to exchange your soul. So he said, what shall it profit a man? Profit. He's speaking business now. If he gains the whole world and what? Loses his soul. You know you are prospering by your world when your soul is dying while your wealth is growing. When you meet God, he will cause both your soul and your wealth to grow. If your soul is growing and your wealth is not growing, the problem is ignorance. If your wealth is growing and your soul is not growing, the problem is fraternity with this age. But if your soul is growing and your wealth is growing, it's proof that God is the one who is lifting you. The second reason why you need wealth in your life, if I would say very quickly, is because the Bible makes a very interesting statement that God revealed to me recently. Am I wasting your time? Jesus, please hear me. If you're a minister of the gospel, please hear me. Because this is the strategy the devil wants to use and embarrass people these days. Notice that Jesus went about preaching. The moment Jesus started preaching, those who came to him were tax collectors. They came to disgrace him. And they said, you are preaching and you are not paying tax. In other words, you are not living your word. They knew that they would not find him with women. They would not find him with anything. They came with the issue of resources. And Jesus said, paraphrasing, what is this embarrassment for now? He said, well, anyway, go to the fish. Catch that fish. Remove coin from it. And when you remove coin from it, give the man and let him go and then he says blessed are the peacemakers do you know what is the reward of a peacemaker he says they shall what watch this peace i give you jesus is speaking my peace i give not as the world gives do you know how he gives us peace he showed us the formula give to caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. So when you hold a Bible and you are serving God, Caesar will come for his coins. Every time you are lifting your voice to worship God, Caesar will come as bills. Caesar will come as school fees. Caesar will come as house project. And he says, the way I give peace is that I give you both a Bible and a coin so that while you are worshipping me when Caesar comes you give him his coin and let him go are you getting what I'm teaching you now yes sir. so while you are worshipping and lifting up the name of the Lord here comes the landlord where is that stupid pastor I'm here with police to close your church and he says the way the way I give my peace is that while you are giving God what belongs to God, I know Caesar will come. The tribute collectors will come. So there is a provision in my economy to make sure Caesar's coin is on your hand while you are worshipping. So that while he comes, you give to Caesar. That way, you are a peacemaker. Hear me. One of the greatest reasons why believers in this country today are turning away from the things of God. It's not fornication. Believe me when I tell you this. It's not just immorality in terms of, you know, compromise with their bodies. 
but the tribute collectors are coming to interrupt your worship so you stand to worship ah. we lift our hands to the great I am who was and who is and is and here comes your bill to interrupt your worship hey this is the PTA letter your twins they've increased the school fees from 100,000 to 150 and suddenly hold on please your worship becomes doubt and fear God are you still there you gave God what belonged to God but you could not give Caesar what belonged to Caesar and Caesar will stand there to embarrass you I'm praying for somebody may God satisfy you early with his mercy in life in the name of Jesus Christ you see ba it takes time to know God it takes time to learn the ways of God it takes time to impact a generation it takes time to pray you pray five hours every day poor won't you fail one day your wife will look at you and say what kind of man did I marry you'll be surprised you will not be able to pray again so God says I want your time but Caesar also wants his coin and so you have to use your time and share it both for God and for Caesar so God empowers you are we together I have seen what stress can do to men I've seen what stress can do to churches I've seen what financial stress can do to people the devil will come to tempt you with something you will reject it he will amplify the stress and come again and say I'm still here in case an ungodly man came and said marry me and I will change your life financially he said no 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 God already revealed to me that I'm going to serve him he will increase the stress it's your mother by yourself that will call you and say let me warn you if you bring anybody in this house that doesn't look like where we are going so no matter what God told you that stress will, there are many people in homes today that they should not be money took them there there are many marriages that should not have scattered money what guns could not do money scattered it poverty is a dangerous thing it's not about prosperity talk my brothers and sisters it's a strategy to destroy the saints some of you you are seated here right now only God knows when your school fees where your school fees is going to come from you are a student yet you are sending money home so when they gave you a fellowship leadership you could not receive it yet you are anointed and you know you should be serving there but the stress on you cannot allow you but things are changing things are changing I pleaded with God I said I will never pastor and raise a people who are just spiritual and do not have the requisite level of financial influence it is dangerous to work with people the tendencies that come out of a man's heart when he's in financial difficulty only God can help the best of us can become a beast under financial stress that's why the psalmist says satisfy me early with your mercy satisfy me early when you build your house at 70 years it's not a testimony that's mercy There is a spirit in Africa that we must destroy. It is the spirit of lateness. Are we together? Please hear me. If you meet a young, vibrant person, how old are you? I am 22 years. And you are already a preacher? Yes, sir. A master's holder? Yes, sir. Married? Yes, sir. This car is your own? Yes, sir. This house is your own? Yes, they say you must be a thief. Now, please.
please understand this. Now, it is true that there is a law of process, but there is a spirit we must destroy. Because what God is making out of you will make everyone around you a, a they will marvel and say, I knew you now. Was it not you that I saw last year? Listen, when you build a house at 60, I'm speaking respectfully. People say, oh, that's good. That means it's proper. It's supposed to be like that. When you use your pension to pay your child's school fees, they say, correct, that's the way it's all right. We're all humans. You see, those kinds of wise sayings, those statements look like they are nice, but they are demonic things. At age 33, Jesus had finished his assignment. 33, he turned the world upside down. By 33, he was done. I have fought the, I have, I have, um, how, how did he say it? It is finished. 33. For someone at 33, you are not even born again. Are you seeing now? And it takes time to know God. At age 12, Jesus was at the temple. The, the doctors of the law, if they had their way, they would drive him. You are too small to know God. Wait until you are 30. It's a spirit. When you see a brilliant child at 15 who is doing well, people say, eh, he's too young. Just allow him first until that spirit makes him dull. And at 40, he's still finding out his left from his right. I speak to you by the God of heaven. The grace that can give people speed in life, may it come upon you. Hallelujah. You see a man of 60 years, 70 years, and a small boy of 12 years. And you see the labor. The man is shaking already. He's sick, but he has to pay the child's primary school fees. What sort of life is that? Because of this difficulty. An average graduate in Nigeria may not get a good job for the next 10 years after graduation and when you meet people they say it's all right it's, well, are you not seeing me it's like that you are even lucky that your own is after 10 years you got something small <laughs> in as much as i sympathize with these things it's a spirit that what you don't confront you will never conquer are we together the moment you see certain young people doing something great, they will say you're either a musician, a secular musician, or a uh, uh, footballer, thank you, a sportsman. You mean someone born again who knows God cannot hurry up in life? Is it a curse? Joash was king at age eight. Josiah was king at age nine. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. You lead me and guide me to the city up above. You lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. Listen, some of you, the time you should be born again, you were not born again. A man that gets born again at 40, you don't need advancement alone, you need restoration. Because already the time has gone. You give yourself another 5 to 10 years to know God and to grow and to be mentored. And then to understand the laws of life to succeed. You will succeed at 70. So he says, I can restore years. That canker worm, not situations, canker worm.
farmer worm caterpillar. Are we together? Yes. Imagine what will happen to your children by the time they are five years with the knowledge you have now. They will first get born again at two years. Filled with the Holy Spirit at two years. Are we together? By age seven, what you learned at 15, they already know. By 13, they've started their destiny. Because while they're in the womb, you will find out from God, what is my child going to become? You will not let him discover it after 35 years of an experience like Cain. Meandering destiny before you now find out that you were called. You joined police. You worked in the bank. You worked as, 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 as um, whatever it is. All of this, you were finding fulfillment before finally God said, how long will it take you to know I called you? It is powerful to find God early. Those who seek me early, there is a timing to it. Not all times are convenient. This is why you must appreciate the opportunity you are given by this great ministry to mentor and invest Jesus into you at this level. Yes. Nobody outgrows the need to be guided. Let me give the last one. The last index that measures success is relationships. Now pay attention to this one. You are as successful as your relationships. Our world is yet to understand the power embedded in relationships. Relationships are advantageous connections. Please follow me. Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. You got saved because of a relationship. You are in school today because of your relationship with a lecturer and you are learning. It is your relationship with the Holy Spirit that continues to progress your knowledge. When God wants to honor you, he will bring quality relationships. Everybody say quality relationships. Now the paradox is if you have too many friends, it's a sign that you don't have values. You need few friends and many relationships. Mm. <laughs> relationships don't have to subscribe to your value system they are just connections a destiny helper may be hedonistic and may be used by god momentarily but a friend must subscribe to your value systems if you have many friends in your life it's a sign that your standards are weak weak enough for anyone to be your friend but you need relationships please look at me you are as blessed as your relationships i am here standing on your campground because of relationships a baby comes to the earth because of relationship you are not successful if you do not have relationships the clearest proof of favor is not money is the loyalty and the hearts of men when God gives a generation to hear you you are favored is God speaking to us you need advantageous relationships. There are men who may not have money today, but they don't have a need because their receipt rights paid for through relationships, not cash. Paid for through relationships. There are people today who are looking for money to build houses. There are people today whose relationships have become an investment. Listen to me. You need quality relationships quality relationships in your life that means you must understand the laws of relationships the bible says he that wants friends must first show himself friendly you must understand the law of honor you must understand that the psychological need of any man and every man on earth is the need to be loved the need to be valued and the need to be appreciated this must be at the back of your mind while you treat people if you insult and violate this law you will never rise the law of honor you've heard me say it second only to the law of encounter is one of the most powerful spiritual laws that i've had 
I can begin to tell you stories today because of this. When we got to the redemption camp, thank God for Pastor Sam and a few of the people. And I was so honored at the priority that they gave us and everything. They made it a big deal, my being there. And I looked at the people. I would have stupidly stood there and said, oh, they now acknowledge Joshua Selman. But you understand relationships. People forget what you tell them, but they don't forget how you made them feel. They are like elephants on that. They will remember after 30 years. And they are unforgiving about it. If I come and stand here and I insult this church, insult your leaders, and make it look like everybody is unserious, I may never come here again. Let me show you why doors open once and never open again. One single law, dishonor. We do not understand the capacity to discern. Listen, gentlemen and ladies, hear me. It's true that you can fail a course and honor can upgrade your score. The lecturer can call you. Yes, you failed. Yes, sir, I did. Honestly, sir, I've been, I've, I've, I'm not a lazy student, but I have a lot of family challenges and stress. Ah, what is this ticker on you? You're a member of this church. Are you a smart person? He will ask you a question in passing and you answer and you say go. The final year result will come out and you see you've graduated. Honor upgraded your score. But another arrogant student will come there and say, it's my right. Please, I am not stupid. I know my right. And the lecturer will look at him and say, you will stay here for the next four years. Please learn the things that I teach you. Success is a system. It's a system that you engage. I had the privilege of meeting our father before coming here and what warm reception he gave. And I was very careful to make sure that I honored him sincerely. Your leaders here have honored me with all my heart. They have, they have gone out of their way to demonstrate honor. It's the reason why every time they invite me, no matter, in fact, it's as if the protocol department already has, they just find out the date and keep their dates. No matter what happens, they keep it there. If it's four square, don't come their way. Honor preserved it like that. Listen, listen, learn what I teach you tonight and you will play life like a chess. Many people will say you are lucky, but you know what you are doing. You know, a few people see me and say, ah, apostle, God is lifting you. You are fortunate. And I say, oh boy, when you rise by knowledge, you don't fear where you are going because knowledge took you there to keep you. Wisdom and knowledge, the Bible says, will be the stability of your times. Is God speaking to someone? Yes, Success. Imagine what happens to you when you are on fire spiritually. Imagine what happens to you when you are enlightened intellectually. That the scope of your relevance is not just the pulpit. Don't drop the mic and look useless until Sunday. Be able to be relevant to a civilization. And David served his own generation with excellence and intelligence and understanding. Imagine that you are healthy and strong, strong enough to see your children's children. Imagine that you are blessed enough to not think of money, but focus on God and his purposes. And imagine that you have the privilege to have quality relationships that become keys that open doors for you. That man is a success. I said that man is a success. Show me a man who is only spiritually alive. He may have an advantage, but in this life, he will pay for it. Show me a man who ignores God, but is intellectually sound. He will go so far, but he will end up looking like his past. Show me a man who has a healthy body, who dissipates energy, eating well, adorning the physical body and forgetting God and forgetting his mind. I show you a man who will continue to flatter himself around a circle and remain there. Show me a man who all he's pursuing is money without this four. I show you a man who has found a job that will never pay him salary. The pursuit for money without these things. 
show me a man who all he has is earthly relationships he will now know that men are men they will say you are our king today and they will say crucify him tomorrow the same men men will clap you today and stone you tomorrow and say remember i was the one who clapped yesterday i've changed my mind so when you want to be balanced this message i'm teaching you that you are receiving in one session is somebody's lifetime testimony this is pain that someone spent his lifetime learning compressed in one encounter is why it is good to come to church I was glad when they said unto me, the church is not a nuisance to society. Does what I have done to you tonight in these few minutes, I have redeemed your time. Now you know what to focus on. Ah, so success is not what I seek. I attract by who I'm becoming. So you focus on your destiny while everything gravitates towards you. Imagine if years ago I kept praying for square, I must stand on your altar. This is my desire. It's a foolish prayer. It's unnecessary. Growth already answered that prayer. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, hear me. We are going to pray shortly. There is nobody you see that you desire and you admire. They look like mysteries because of what you do not know. Growth is a system. Growth is a system. The difference between you today and our great fathers of faith, the difference between you today and a Benny Hinn, the difference between you today and a Maurice Sorulo, the difference between you today and a Dangote and Otedola, the difference is these systems. That means I may come from a background weak, beaten by life, but I can begin to rise like you are rising, one step after the other. For now, you are paying attention to your spiritual life. Don't worry. Let me tell you this as I prepare for us to pray. I apologize, I know our time is gone. Years ago, when we started with God on campus, it would be stupid at that level to start teaching on money and start teaching on family life. It's unnecessary. There are levels in your life where the only thing that should be your message is God. Fire. How to fast. How to know God. How to study scripture. Are we together? If you are in that fellowship and you are turning and looking at a sister, you are really carnal because your mind should not even go there. Your assignment should be in the beginning, God. You come with fire. That's the time you have the strength to pray. You can look for one holiday time and spend three days dry because the glory of the young is their strength. You will not always have that time, I guarantee you. Today, right now, Having a retreat is time I must beg God and have luxury for. It was from Mina to a conference in Kaduna here and then I'm back. I think all through this year, maybe aside from the election period, I've not had eight to nine days at home this year. Whereas there were days I was as free as nothing. If I did not redeem those days, these days would not come. It's God speaking to someone. Now you have the time. Some of you, as young as you are, you are snoring away your destiny. Your father is sleeping, you are sleeping too. Your mentor is sleeping, you are sleeping too. That's the time to wake up and say, I will sleep in the future. But for now, Zakatoska Parakata. They say, this fasting, won't it kill you? You say, no. There's money in the future that I will eat well from. But for now, God reveal yourself to me. God says you are going to be an evangelist and you, you get the map of the world in a paper and every night you are laying your hands on it. The nations, oh God. 
today i get very surprised young people just start with god and the next thing they are they, you come for fellowship as you are answering altar call you're already looking at a sister you're already looking at a brother you're, you see oh this kind of this this upside down pathway is why people don't grow please hear what i'm teaching you are we together ask anybody our fathers would tell you when they started they did not know male and female they only knew god it was even god that had to tap them one day while they are praying and say hey, hey, hey relax father the nations mm -mm. that's your wife okay god i've seen but mm -mm. i'm not answering you again turn go and meet her can you be so focused on destiny some of us like money to an extent that's all you dream of that's all. no 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 take it step by step you are in hundred level you are in every club you are in every association you are in every society you are in every group whether it's occultic or whatever you think you are social any man of vision does not have that luxury of time you must choose the things that are needful your academics god and then fellowship that's how visionary people start as you adjust you will now have time for other things please reprioritize your destiny this night there are groups to resign from quickly there are clubs and associations that your pocket money is five thousand or ten thousand the due for that club is two thousand you are the only one who is a student in that club resign this night and settle down with god Every night, challenge yourself. Whether it is raining or not, get up to your secret place. You are weak, but you are praying. Heaven is watching. My son, continue. This is the overseer of the ministry that will mentor the children. You are praying. You are a young lady here. Every night, Lord, that I will know you. And God says, this woman, this is the only kind of man that can marry her the kind of anointing this lady is working on is not somebody who is loitering around no this womb should bring a prophet not a human being are we together now yes this is how we rose ask anybody who has risen here a time must come in your life when you will not have time for anything again except god there are people who graduated i'm not saying to do it but there are people who graduated and because they got born again late they allocated one year to seek god alone alone no nothing to catch up and those people are on fire they are blessed today there are others who have been busy since they were young till now they have not done anything you can choose where you want to be i make up my mind to be balanced I will know him and serve him all my days until I see him. It's a vow and a commitment I've made in life and in death. I love him more than anything. Ask him. He's won my heart. That's, that's for sure. I will never be offended in him. Number two, I made up my mind that I will not stand before anybody on earth who will look at me as a nuisance. Whether you are a politician, whether you are an atheist, whether you are a hedonistic person, I don't care. I should be able to present God with a level of intelligence that will make you know that Christianity is a blessing, not a nuisance. And since I found out my background did not provide for that advantage, I outsourced it through passion. Sit down, buy the truth. Buy the truth. Don't give excuses. Buy the truth. Don't buy clothes. Not with one. Buy books buy tapes sit down one trouser yes sir feed your mind please be careful don't say i'm a man of god everybody knows me i need to start dressing well who knows you who told you settle down all my scholarships as a student all my scholarships all there was not one that was spent for me for my personal no not at all it was books and books. I had a small rechargeable. Every night, I would sleep. I, would, I bought this compendium of Bible on tapes. Strong's Concordance, Dake's Bible, all of these books, the whole series, Kenyon, Hagin, 
the fathers of faith in this nation i gathered them like this you would think that i want to build a museum because the vision i saw that version of me will be joking to believe god will take it there as i leave this place right now after the grace you go to my room there you will find my laptop there are already things to study i'm not going back this night and go and sleep and say oh, i have a session tomorrow that level of laziness cannot look let me tell you it takes stamina to stand on some dimensions it's not just anointing generically the anointing needs a vessel to rest on i'm showing you the labor dimension i i'm sorry i did not really get into my topic today we have a session tomorrow but this there is a price for uncommon impact ask my people did you know that as close as i am to all these guys the team that travels with me i never really have time one-on-one -on -one with them they also themselves as close as they are they look forward to times when i'm free so that they can now ask their own questions when we go inside there now they may not see me again till tomorrow act like you have not achieved anything in life act like nobody has known you act like your name has not gone anywhere don't plateau at a level no sir champions don't stop the only thing that stops them is death champions never arrive apostle joshua selman you're a man of power you're a man of miracles to what degree to what degree if you pray for 100 barren women and 10 get healed 10 over 100 what grade is that students talk to me so if you pride yourself and say oh i'm a healer based on what listen let me tell you there are dimensions that kings will not come to you you have to press kings don't come to your light they come to the brightness of your rising it's gentiles that come to your light there is no amount of tiredness that sustains the power to distract me no if i miss out on my prayer time i have a system of discipline on myself to make it back Is it alright that I'm, I'm a bit open with you like this? Because many people, we, we like results. Behind results, there is a price you cannot imagine. You cannot imagine. Oh God, use me. Let me bless the nations. I agree. But my brothers and my sisters, you need to build stamina. The remnant of the house of Jacob will bear root downwards. And then will bear fruit upwards. We are going to have a few minutes to pray. Tomorrow I'll touch on the topic that I came with. But hear me. <laughs> you are complaining already. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have to. <laughs> you want a vigil. We'll not do it. No, 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 no. We have to be fair. I know you are motivated by what I'm saying, but you have to sleep. Listen, my, my dear ones, listen to me, listen to me, listen, we are going to hear me, hear me, we are going to pray. Tonight, I know that I just shared with you a few things to challenge you. Tonight is inspiration and motivation. Why? Because many of us are at points in our lives and our destinies where if you get it right now you have gotten it right forever there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to clamp down your growth we are trusting god for a generation in four square that would be so young men who are extremely anointed and successful not anointed and struggling that a day in the nearest future will come in Foursquare here where it is, we will be a gathering of kings. 
You will see someone doing ushering. You will think it's because he's not employed until you see the company he runs. And when it's time to pray, he's rolling on the ground. That in itself is a sermon to someone who doesn't love God. I vow to myself that I will never lead weak people. It is dangerous to lead weak people. My greatly revered mentor who had gone to be with the Lord, bless his soul, Dr. Miles Monroe. He shared and he said, a true leader does not maintain followers. He turns followers to leaders and leaders to agents of change. Listen to me. Seated in this place right now are the prophets of the next season. Seated in this place right now are the apostles of the next season. You have seen it in your dreams. I'm not telling you what you don't know. Seated here are the next Reinhard Bonkers. Reinhard Bonkers is already on his way. That belong to a generation. But are you ready for it? Or will it pass you and look for someone else? Did you know Bible students that the first person God called was not Abraham? Abraham's destiny was his father's. Read your Bible. The person who was called was terror. And he missed out on it. And the mandate shifted to Abraham. Who would later become Abraham. Can we spend five minutes to pray? I'm going to allow you, I will call and then give us a few prayer points. But in the next two minutes, I want to leave everybody in this campground with God alone. For the next two minutes, find a corner and cry, Lord, I will not fail destiny. There are men and women tied to my grace. Is there someone who can cry to God? Ah! Come on, four square. Cry to the God of heaven. Let me encounter destiny. No shadow you will light up. Coming after me. No mountain you won't kick down. Coming after me. will not fail destiny oh god you have called me to be a prophet to the nations i may not look like it but let tonight be like the threshing floor of naboth Sisters, pray. Where are the Catherine Kumans that must arise? Where are the Emmy Semple McPhersons? Eli is calling Samuel. Where are you? Pray, pray, pray tonight. Lord, pour out your spirit. Is there someone praying? Oh no. The people of the earth. Ah. Let your sons and daughters speak your words of prophecy send us dreams and visions reveal the secret of your heart Lord, our 
world is waiting Let creation see the coming of your day There's gonna be a great awakening hey, There's gonna be a great revival in our land there's gonna be a great awakening And everyone who calls on Jesus They will be saved Cry to the Lord Pray I surrender all to you Everything I give to you I'm withholding nothing Withholding nothing Withholding nothing yeah. Withholding nothing Will you give your heart away? Hey, will you give your heart away so he can use you? Will you give your time away? Will you give your time away? And I, I'm desperate for you. Few minutes and we're done tonight. Hey. And I, I'm lost without you. Lift up a cry. Lord, I will not fail destiny. There are generations tied to my grace. There are generations tied to my obedience. People will not go to hell because I failed. Creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Ladies, pray. Gentlemen, pray. I may be the first from my family, but here I come. Here I come in the name of the Lord God of heaven. Please pray. Please pray. A few minutes and we're done. You're not wasting your time. You are negotiating with destiny. You are my strength when I am weak You are the treasure that I see You are my only Lord I'm seeking you as a precious joy Not to give up, I'll be a fool You are my only Lord Sing Jesus, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. hallelujah now I want you to mention the five areas that I lifted and pray them into your life Christ must be represented in this area spiritually fresh fire mentally 
I will be transformed enough to draw to my life the kind of kingdom influence that is desired to lift the name of Jesus. I live long and strong. This body is a gift from God to me. I will not destroy my body with drunkenness. Are you praying? I will not destroy my body with anything that can tear me down. Adultery, fornication, drunkenness. This body is a gift and the only host that can keep my spirit alive here. pray from the depth of your heart yes you are God and you reign forever and ever you are the Lord of yes you are God and you reign forever and ever hallelujah hallelujah please don't be tired bear with me the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside is someone ready to pray father whatever will make me lose in destiny cut it away this night let there be a circumcision if it's a wrong relationship let it live my life if it's an addiction let it be broken by the grace of God someone serious with your destiny cry if it's anger let it live my life if it's laziness it must live my destiny I'm ready to get to the place of destiny no price is too great. Habarato shalakarato skabaria. Hallelujah. 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 Hopefully my session, there's no time to minister to people now and pray for the sick. Tomorrow we'll leave that for the morning. Our minister prophesy over your life. We still have a session so that I will allow you sleep. But there's just one last prayer. We'll pray to round this. Father, the kind of hunger that will attract the mantle for a generation. Listen to me, please. Not a mantle for a congregation not a mantle for a parish lord the kind of hunger that will make you give me what you gave Reinhard Bonke the kind of hunger that will make you give me what you gave the generals let that baptism happen to me now if someone praying lift your voice and cry for everyone that asketh receive it someone you are praying for a generational mantle the kind of hunger oh god that money cannot satisfy the kind of hunger that fame cannot satisfy the kind of hunger that the achievement in life cannot satisfy the kind of hunger that the applause of men cannot satisfy the kind of hunger that even my results cannot satisfy someone is crying Someone is crying to the God of heaven. Lord, I know I'm a prophet. I have prophesied, but I'm not satisfied. Greater hunger. I'm an apostle, but greater hunger. I'm a first class student, and I'm grateful for it. But I cry for something greater, oh God. I'm already in ministry, 
I prayed for a woman the other day and she had a miracle but I'm not satisfied. Give me something for a generation, oh God. Please pray. Pray. Take away spiritual mediocrity. The hunger for a generation. Lord, they call me great, but I need a real mantle from heaven. I want to represent God to a generation, not just a church. Two minutes and we're done. Two minutes of a heartfelt cry. Four square, are you praying? God is searching men, looking for men in this end time. Lord, I thank you for my result in ministry, but I'm tired of this level. Tired of this level. Thank you for my results in business, but I'm tired of this level. As a campus fellowship president, as a prayer secretary, as a Bible study secretary, as a, as a zonal leader, Thank you for where you have taken me, but I refuse to let you go tonight. You must place something upon my destiny that is generational. Please listen. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be, I will share with you a few things, but tomorrow's meeting will be an impartation. There has to be a transfer. Some of you, what you saw in your dreams, what you have seen in your visions for many years, it's time for something to come upon your life that a generation will know that the hand of God is upon you. So while you go back to eat and to sleep, don't be carried away and start gisting and talking as if you are not in the presence of God. Spiritualize your mind. As you go eat, just exchange pleasantries, go to bed. Wake up with a hunger tomorrow and write it that today is the day when this mantle for my destiny comes. Today is the day when that grace I saw in the dream I know that you love me all over the world and I'm grateful for your love. I'm indebted to you. But it's unfortunate that there are a group of people. It has gotten to my table time and again that there have been several people parading all over the internet as Joshua Selman and coming up with all kinds of charitable projects, taking advantage of the love the support and the loyalty that people have for me and extracting money from people and it, it's terrible is uh, to know that people can can do these kinds of things and i'm saying it especially to our international community there are a number of sites i don't know if the media would project them but that is not me personally i'm not on social media you find any apostle joshua selman or anything that looks like me or on social media it is not me uh, these are scammers they may project my message they may do a lot of things but anybody let me say this um you are always free to share my content it's it's been my joy and and there are there are several platforms on youtube instagram and all over that just i know that there are different fan pages on on social media that just celebrate what god is doing in my life and 
become support systems for us to take this message i love you those people you have my endorsement and my blessings but anybody please listen let this be a disclaimer anyone who would ask you to send money to give them money for any charitable project um, um, please know that you are dealing with a fraudster you can feel free to report them um, to the, the various um, uh, uh, authorities that govern the social media platforms and you can also do well to communicate a protocol department a media department a public relations department the lines will also be on the screen uh, for you to see please make sure you have these details have our protocol lines our public relation lines they they respond to everything that has to do with correspondences the media for all your media concerns um, this is so that you can have uh, the, the the authorized channels we make ourselves as accessible as possible for everything that has to do with the ministry we have able body trained people who love you passionately who will be able to communicate and for all your givings you can also contact our finance department absolutely lovely people please listen because i know that many of you um desire to probably sow into my life sow into the ministry there are there are designated details that the finance department can give to you please anyone parading i would repeat again as joshua selman i do not have any charity project i'm a philanthropist you know that i give with all my heart but i do not have any orphanage hope that i uh, and then I will not, I'm not even on social media and I think it's, it's insulting to you. I honor you too much to go on social media and ask you for money for prayer. Please listen, I, I want to say this. You know that I'm a man of integrity and this also, let me use the opportunity to say it on behalf of any a man and woman of God that is a person of integrity. When you listen to a man's message, it gives you an idea of their convictions, what they can do and what they cannot do. I, 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 I will never, never go by God's grace. God has blessed me with several people who continue to bless and support what we represent all over the world and I am profoundly grateful for their partnership. Please and please, if you want to partner with the ministry, you want to bless me, there are designated channels. I am grateful, uh, but so that your seeds don't enter um, wrong hands and have people take advantage of you. Millions of naira, thousands of dollars have been uh, extracted by several people in the name of uh, you know all kinds of things there are even people who have supposedly written publications uh, as Joshua Selman it's unfortunate uh, you know it's come to my notice also that people have written books purporting to be Joshua Selman when a book is out we have that influence and we'll let people know by God's grace we have lots of things out I know that God has granted me a measure of influence and I'm grateful for it and many people uh, can leverage on it for their own advantage provided you do not hurt people provided you do not scam people is a terrible thing and i will assure you that we will continue to look out for these people and make sure that the social media as far as this ministry is concerned is safe for your participation so please do well connect with us on on our all our platforms for updates and then um do well to spread the teachings. The teachings are free. Let them go all over the world. And then um, just let everybody know that I am grateful. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for everything. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you